Now, yes. I'm not going to mention this again because it wouldn't be fair. So this is the last time I'm going to say that at the end of each presentation, it's the loudest pop. So this is your last warning. Uh, as you are impressed by these guys, just, just erupt and, and let them hear it. Okay. Ready? Winston. You ready? Ready. Oh, you want? I don't, no, that's a good one. You want this one? That's the one. Oh, this is the one. This is the one. All right, so thank you. Thank you very much. I get to be the first person to talk about abundance in five minutes. It's a big topic in five minutes. So abundance. What is it about abundance and being an abundance advisor? Because that's what I am. So a quick story. There's a guy named John, and when he was five years old, his mom said, you know, all you need to be in life is just be happy. That's what you should be in, in life. So he went to school, and the teacher said, OK, what, what do you all want to be? You know, they didn't use that language, though, because it was British. Anyway, John said, I want to be happy. And the teacher said, I don't think you get it. And he said, I don't think you get life. Anyway, so nevertheless, what is an abundance advisor? It's someone who has a big focus, a narrow focus on a very broad subject. It's someone who helps people stand out in a crowd. When in, 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 in terms of a commoditized world and helps people find their distinct appeal. Usually, abundance advisors can help people with their, through the intellectual property that they have and, and the experiences that they know about. And they're not afraid of sharing those experiences or their professional contacts. Really, it's about, about not waiting and creating. And, and that's so important because time is of the essence for an abundance advisor and their clients and the people they work with. Because it could be a matter of life and death. Abundance advisors are wholehearted. They, they, they come from here because of the passion they have and the beliefs they have about the people they work with. And they're very selective about that because they want to make sure it's the right motivation. Is it about money or is it about something else? So this woman was one of my inspirations. Her name's Brene Brown. And does anybody know Brene Brown? Yeah, she's coming here in Dead Alice, pretty exciting. So anyway, she, uh, she helped me to understand that perhaps the track that I was on was not exactly where I needed to be, and, and now I offer different types of help to different kinds of people for things that I believe in. She helped me reframe who I was for who I am now. And that's the kind of work that I do with other people. And the other interesting thing about being involved with abundance is it involves scarcity and the ability to frame scarcity and dictate value from that scarcity to provide abundant services or products for other people. Abundant advisors work from the heart because it's really about a passion they have. Something that uh, their clients and or people that know Simon Sinek. Do you all know Simon Sinek? Oh, good. There's, I'm in the right company with people. So Simon talks about your why and knowing, starting with why, and how important that is. And, and if you believe what you believe and can start with why, it can really touch people in the, in the right way. And hopefully, they buy what, why you do what you do, not just what you do. So one of the places, and here's a few examples of abundant advisors. This is the Wheel of Life. It is a horse sanctuary for unhomable horses. The woman who started this actually is Patrice Wheeler. She's here tonight. You can actually talk to her about this. It's fascinating. The horses actually help people as well with their authentic, authentic selves. This is a friend of mine, Jasmine Roman, who said, you know, I got a job at Tesla. I want to share that information with people. She wasn't afraid of like, you know, keeping it to herself. So you can read about her on my LinkedIn profile and see how she got a job at Tesla. Pretty interesting. The guy on your left is Ernest Green. He ran into this other guy, Colin Smith, at church. Colin Smith had been in a terrible car accident and left him really you know, disabled. He wanted to go to college, and Ernest decided to help him four years in college. Ernest did it all on his own. Just thought he'd do it. What are some of the barriers to being an abundance advisor? Well, you saw some of them. And I would argue that one other is ego. Most importantly, though, obviously, you have to believe in yourself. You have to come from here to really be able to help people and influence them. Because at the end of the day, 
as Maya Angelou so poignantly stated. People may not remember what you said. They may not remember what you did for them. They will remember how you made them feel. So I would appreciate your listening very carefully tonight to the other speakers who are going to be following me. Very, very grateful I got the opportunity to speak first. And um, figure out how you can be abundant in your own worlds. Thank you.